My name is Dr. Mark Gallagher, and in this video we're going to look at our patient Krista. Krista came into the office with my colleague Dr. Shannon Parisi. During her exam we found that her balance was off, that her response to the tuning fork was abnormal, she had a hyper response. Then we did some muscle testing to try to determine where her level of dysfunction was in the cervical spine. We made the correction at C7. Then we went back and rechecked her muscle responses and lastly went back with the tuning fork and these all normalized. This is once again a great case study in how chiropractic care is beneficial to people suffering from anxiety disorders or panic attacks. You're never going to get out of here. <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> what time do you have to leave? This is our patient, Krista. In the room with us is Dr. Parisi. And we're going to examine Krista here real quick and see what she has. <laughs> All right. Whoa. Did you do this one? At one point, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. I don't know why. You're going to close your eyes. I'm going to have you very gently and slowly bring the tip of his finger to the tip of your nose. Whoa. Try this one. What are you trying to test? Your cerebellum. See which one's not working. What's your cerebellum? Brain. When the cerebellum is off, you have anxiety, balance issues, and digestive problems. Krista, you're in good hands, relax, okay? I'm going to bring this in my hand, I'm going to touch it to your bones. I want to know how that vibration in this foot feels in comparison to the vibration in this foot. How's that compared to that? So what's interesting is when we touch the tuning fork on our patient, what we see is that she has a hyper response. We are so soft. <laughs> How's it this? Compared to that. I don't like either of them. How's that? Do you get us in the center of your head or more on one of your versus the other? Right. Legs straight. I'm going to push down towards the table. You're going to push up towards the sky. Ready? Push up for me. Go. Great. Push on this side. Push up. Push up for me. Go. You can go in front of the camera. We'll cut it out. Push up for me. Go. Good. Becky, we're videotaping. Becky. <laughs> Mom! Push up. Go. <laughs> the meatballs! <laughs> so remember how I was telling you about people can have responses where they don't shut off. Push up. What does that mean? It means you're, it's why you're anxious. I already know it's out. Your C7. Push that way for me. Go. My what? Your C7. C7. Push out. What's that? It's an air in your neck. Push out for me. Go. So they should be weak. Push out. They're not. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to stimulate this area and then we're going to go back and test. And what we're going to see is if she has a change in her reflexes after we do mobilization of her C7. So what we want to see is inhibitory responses. Push up. That means we want to see everything weak. This is why she can't relax. The responses should be weak, and they were strong on the last test. There's a high probability you're going to get warm after this adjustment. Okay. Right. <laughs> the doctor going to contact the C7. I'm going to push on the spine of this, not so much the TP. Yep. But you got a little sweaty, feel it? I am sweaty. I'm yeah. like... Push up and go. We're going to have to calm that down. We're going to recheck something here real quick. Is this better or worse? Better. Better or worse? Same. Better or worse? Better. So we're going to go back and see. So we're going to go back and check what cerebellum. <laughs> <laughs> so 
we are going to go back and check what cerebellum is underperforming. Bend this knee for me. Pull towards your head. Go. Good. That one's strong. Bend your knee. Pull towards your head. Good. Now we're going to stress the cerebellum. Just turn your head to the left for me. Don't let me pull. Turn your head right. Don't let me pull. There it is. Try again. Go. But that should go weak? Should not go weak. Okay. You can relax your head. So we're going to massage the patient's foot. <laughs> For proprioceptive inputs. That's so funny, ladies. <laughs> I don't know that inside joke. It <laughs> just sounded so funny. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to pull her toes. Chiropractic care relaxes tight muscles, including the muscles around arteries. When the muscles relax, the arteries open up, allowing more blood flow. More blood flow causes an increase in heat, which is why Krista had an increase in body temperature. I am like so sweating out. <laughs> now I'm hot. I, I actually, can see it. Like you now check my temperature because now I'm like boiling. All right, we're gonna go back and check this. So she jumped last time we did her knees. That's how chiropractic is supposed to be. Center of head or more one ear versus the other. Center. So that's what we want to do when we get her cerebellum working properly. And and if we go back and recheck that test, then this knee don't pull. And that's what we want. We said it, and so it's never cracked since. Get a little warm. Yeah. Which is okay. That means she's been out of place a long time. Just 37 minutes. You're gonna feel much better tonight, okay? You'll be calmer and you'll be less stressed when you leave the office. How do you guys know each other? Well, we're in the same field. How would we not know each other? <laughs> he no. met my parents. The one time my parents were here. I met her parents. He met them. I came on her opening day to, to congratulate her. Oh, that's nice of you. Yeah. Was it the No, it wasn't opening day. We it was your celebration before day. we were opening. Well, it was like whatever your grand opening was. Yes. You may pull this foot to your back. Do not let me pull. Go. So these are our hamstrings. They should be strong. They're not. Try again. Go. So she's good on the right. She's bad on the left. <laughs> now we're going to challenge joints and push one joint in one direction. We're going to start with her sacrum. We're going to go back and check her hamstring. Go. It holds. I like that. We're going to push the sacrum in the opposite direction. We're going to go back and recheck her hamstring. And it doesn't hold. So it's not the way we're going to adjust. We're going to adjust this way. We're going to come check her hip. Sorry. Don't let me pull. And it holds. We're going to check the other hip just to demonstrate. Don't let me pull. Go. So, so weird. <laughs> So she has a left cerebellum, right cortex issue. Right cortex means we're going to adjust that ilium, but it didn't test correctly. So don't let me pull. Go. Okay, you can leave it. You left your left. Why am I like such a nervous Nelly today? Mirror neurons are one method of nonverbal communication between humans. Dr. Algy was explaining to Krista to stay calm because an anxious patient can transfer their emotions to the doctor. Do you know the concept of mirror neurons? Mm -hmm. They're, you know, they're how commu humans communicate emotions to one another. So my patients get nervous, I get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Doctors who are sensitive cannot let their patients' emotions interfere with their ability to deliver chiropractic care. I wonder if that's why the other person couldn't crack me at all, Shannon. Oh, yeah. Male or female? Male. Yeah. Everyone with the joint besides me. Yeah, one person almost broke my neck. Like, he was, like, breathed the shit out of my neck, and the other person couldn't even get a single ribbon. Uh, you don't want to experiment with your body like that, right? And it's a good way to get more injuries, and we want you to have less injuries, so be very cautious of the people who didn't like to crack you. No, it's only you and Shannon. Are you going to put your hip in? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> You'll be good now. Be relaxed enough. You're easy to adjust once you relax. It's just... <laughs> oh my god! 
That's like the second time ever that's actually gone in. Good luck with that. <laughs> Better? Yeah. How did you like that, Krista? That was fabulous. <laughs>